This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. Welcome to Knife Talk, the number one knife-related podcast on this germ-infested planet. We're here for you, <laughs> the knife maker, the knife enthusiast, DIYer, doesn't really matter. We're here for you. I'm Jeff Fader from Fader Knives. With me is the king, Mareko Momasi, Momasi Fire Arts, and the president of the Makery Network, and the founder and owner of Chop Knives, Craig Lockwood. Guys... Good morning. Or whatever. Good afternoon. How well, are we? Good super early we? morning. I, I try me. to give a I try to give a <laughs> you know pizzazz, a little a little spritz to you guys. Yeah. First but thing in the morning. This is spritzing. an international show for those who may have just sort of tuned into us. International I'm here in France where it's currently what? Just gone three PM in the afternoon. Um Jeff is in New York. Well, what's the time there, Jeff? Nine oh nine AM. And Mareko's got the short straw. What's the time there, Mareko? It's 6.09 a.m. Oh, what a Sunday. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you're a champ. You get your roll out of bed. You come right down. <laughs> I, appre- I appreciate your, I appreciate your uh, devotion. Yeah. And you're up early now to make, you know, Valentine's Day pancakes for your wife now, too. So oh, I did that is. yesterday. Oh, well. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day today, right? It's yes. today, yes. It yeah. is. Okay. Mm. Apparently so. But, I mean... For the listener, it's not today. So, no. congratulations on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we've been up to? What, what's the week been like? Who wants to anyway. kick it off? <laughs> I'll kick it off. Man, all right. So, it's been snowing like crazy here since last Thursday. Uh, and <clears throat> in overall comparison to especially like the East Coast where it snows like crazy, um, it's not very much. But here, we've got about... 14 going on i think we're going to get an, another couple inches today uh so probably overall 15 to 16 inches or so um we're not set up like we have maybe one snow plow in each city and so <laughs> they do not plow the snow uh, at all uh they're kind of relying on hopefully the rain coming back to melt the snow away oh. um and Anytime, especially when we get heavy snow like this, it does not work out very well. No. Because it maybe it does rain. Like today, uh, Sunday, it's supposed to start sprinkling and raining this afternoon, but it's still fucking cold. And what's going to happen is it's going to freeze and there's going to be a sheet of ice over all oh. of the snow. And it's just going to be worse. <laughs> way worse so anytime it's it's snowed like this it's usually like a week and a half to two weeks before things really actually clear up on their own because the city doesn't do a goddamn thing um and things kind of get back to what they were before the snow this podcast uh, is turning into us using it as a platform to rant against our towns and our cities that we I've, live in. Yeah, They're city. taking a gamble. All these municipalities take a gamble in regards yeah. to their budget. So obviously where Mareko lives, they're a gambling that it's not going to be as bad as it is. Yeah. So well, they're not prepared. It, yeah, for sure. And I, even, not even just, like on, in, it's only in western Washington. Because eastern Washington gets their asses kicked every year. But Western Washington, because of all the rain and and temp, uh, temperate weather, it it it's a it's a gamble, yeah, as to whether or not it's actually going to snow and how much is it actually going to snow. This is the most snow I've seen in my my time living here in this in Washington, uh, on the west side in in this town. Um, and last time this happened, yeah, people who live uh, out kind of out some of the rural roads. They they're like stuck there for a solid week because the the roads aren't clear or it gets compacted down by some of like the the four wheel drive vehicles that uh and it just turns and then it rains and it turns into a sheet of ice and just nobody f- can fucking go anywhere, um so yeah so it's but on the high side of things <laughs> I've been running around with my son, um the first day we started piling up a bunch of snow because it it was like four four to six inches. The first day, and we, I just started. I took the my snow shovel from that I got when I was in Connecticut and started piling up snow to start building a snow ceratops 
last year we did a uh, a triceratops. <laughs> Still dinosaur crazy then. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we <laughs> built we did a uh, triceratops out of snow instead of like a, a snowman. And we were starting to do that again this year, and we got the big giant mound. And I was like, hey, what do you think about a tunnel? And so we put a tunnel through the mound, and then. <laughs> And then it just kind of sat there like that and got and then it got dumped like another uh eight or ten inches of snow on top of it and across the whole yard, so we started like in, we closed off one of the tunnel doors <laughs> and and made it into kind of like a little tiny cave, and then I made a wall around the backside to kind of make it into a fort, even though <laughs> he doesn't have anybody he's like having a snowball fight against except for me and my wife <laughs> and um <laughs> we pummel his ass pretty good. Uh yeah no for sure we and uh we've been sledding too, um doing some pretty good sledding. There's a couple spots one one's right next to a church that's got a a nice uh what is it like forty foot run, pretty steep hill, and then it kind of flattens out which is great and it goes just out into nothing, and um and so we went and did that yesterday but getting through the snow was a huge pain in the ass. It's such a workout because mm. I'm dragging him on the sled. And I'm walking through the snow, and it's up to my knees almost. And yeah, it was fun. Like the revenant <laughs> expecting a bear to jump out at any point. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah fuck this weather. It's enough already. <laughs> you know, Jesus. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean to be smug, but we've got the the sort of stirrings of spring coming here. We've had weeks of weeks of really bad rain, but uh, the last few days the sun has been out. It's starting to warm up. Um, next weekend gets to like 16, 17 degrees Celsius here, which is, yeah, spring-like. So it's all good weather-wise. I, I don't mean to be smug, but yeah. Yeah, you no, do. No snow here. Yeah, you <laughs> no. do. I do a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I do a bit. Um, but other, otherwise, knife stuff, you know, I was just doing, I was working on some finishing, some coffee finishing on some knives um, before I stopped being at the shop and hope, you know, I, I don't know if I'll be at the shop tomorrow, maybe Tuesday again. So it'll almost be a whole week before I've been, been wow. in work. <sighs> and um, is it due to snow more again now? Uh, like I said, I think it's only going to snow maybe another couple inches before it starts, uh, raining right. this afternoon here. And then, yeah, I don't think it's really supposed to snow. Not like this again, probably for the rest of the year. <sighs> um, so had it. Yeah. yeah. And not much going don't on. Don't even want to talk about snow anymore. I'm so fucking hot at it. I can't even stand it. <laughs> it's enough. I, is it? Is, I mean, there's this like polar vortex thing, like that's it in the whole country right now, right? I don't know. I, I'm being honest with you. It all anno- it's just too annoying to be. Yeah. I don't get trapped in all the. I don't. We look the night before and make our decisions on what, how my sure. wife's got to get out the house. It's, that's it's. Okay, fuck, fuck this. It's yeah. enough already. I like, will it's tell. Enough, man. Tell everybody, please be careful. We got dummies out here racing around like they all own ATVs and shit. And they're just in their stupid Subarus or pickup trucks and stuff. And people are sliding all over the fucking place. Like the snow's not even there. I saw, uh, I don't know if you guys, or at least Jeff saw this in the news. There's this horrible 133 car pileup in Texas. In Fort Worth, Texas. It was fucking gnarly. Like, one person like lost it and started drifting and their truck got turned around everybody started hitting the brakes but they were driving like still driving like 40 or 50 and what happened is it there was like freezing rain and sleet and it just like froze instantly on the ground and nobody could fucking stop and there were like four semi trucks it was gnarly so please people Jesus. Drive safely. Ugh, like you can't. They're like, not listening. The people, the people who are, they're not listening to this podcast. Hopefully, if you're they're driving not. right now while you're listening, please drive safely. Oh, yeah. Pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Ugh, it's enough traffic and weather on the new, on the ones in this fucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. How you been, Jeff? How you There's been? an accident on the GWB. Traffic news. What's the weather and traffic, Craig? <laughs> Traffic's good here. <clears throat> Traffic's good. Yeah, w- weather's good. Um, I can't complain. Um, it's been a good week in the shop. Um, working on some sort of big batches for restaurants. Um, doing a bit of sort of CNC stuff as well, which I'll talk about more in XYZ, the the other podcast. Um, but I've just finished today this prototype with this really cool uh, knife rack. So an issue I have with sending out um, knives to restaurants is that normally sort of bigger bigger orders, you know, 20 plus. Um, 
And I like to send, you know, something that they can store the knives in because, you know, they do want to thrown in drawers or how they store them in a restaurant so I, I normally make this little knife rack thing and my, my brother makes them for me in the uk and he sends them over but things are you know things are happening anyway he's not in work and all the rest of it so so i, I needed to figure out a design that i could use myself so i've got this really smart design where everything sort of packs down into the packaging that i send the knives in um but when they get it they get they get this like knife rack and this particular prototype identity day holds 28 knives and it, it's like a push fit. It all just push fits together. And you've got this clear sort of perspex on the front um, to protect hands from hitting the blades. And the, the blades sort of hang and sort of float in midair. Um, really cool. All designed and done on the CNC. Super fast to make and cheap. But I think it looks quite impressive. So it's really nice to be able to offer that to, you know, to restaurants. Well, you know, as a freebie almost when they, when they order a batch of knives. Um, so they can they can display these knives. And I know they're, they're safe and they're, they're, you know, they're being um, protected while they, once, once they're in the, you know, the back of the kitchen. So, yeah, it's really cool. So uh, that's what I finished prototyping this morning. Um, and, yeah, just working just working on batches, really. Um, it's, been, it's been quite fun. Um, also, my folding knife um, finally nailed the final design um, and I've got the, the pieces being um, laser cut literally as we speak um, so yeah it's been a really productive week and, and all new st like creative stuff you know creating like new stuff so it's, it's been yeah really fulfilling week for me it's been good your, CC, your CNCing has become very very impressive but you've been doing it for a while haven't you uh, yeah, like handle materials for big batches I've been cutting out with a CNC. But I've, I had this, you know, I've got this really shitty old CNC here. Um, but I've got a slightly newer one now, which is still shitty in comparison to, you know, what other people have. Um, but it does the job. And, hmm. um, yeah, it's cool. So, you know, you get that whole thing a lot of people saying, oh, so you're, so you're not making it. But th th this is the dumb work, you know, and... It's, I wouldn't even say it's quicker to do it by CNC, but what it allows me to do is get on with something else while it's whilst that's happening. So scalability, um, exactly, exactly. And I'm just I don't know. I enjoy it. I enjoy that whole designing something on a screen, um, playing around in it in 3D, and then having the physical product in front of you. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty cool. So yeah, it's been a real I say fulfilling week, um, and nothing has gone wrong. Everything that I've, I've meant to happen has has happened and worked. So. It's all good. May all I good. ask awesome. both of you, what is the profile of the person that would say, oh, he's just seeing, seeing it out? What's the profile of that person? <laughs> Let's profile that person. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's somebody who's not trying to do this as a business. Because, I mean, realistic, like Craig said, I mean, it's, it's the monkey cutting out the scales. That's Is that yeah. so important when you really have – uh, plenty of other processes that are way more intensive and time and skill intensive that you could be doing. So why yeah. not but have something the cut out the hand? <laughs> what's the motivation of these I, people to say these nonsensical things? I think they don't know what goes into maybe using a CNC and designing CAD and that kind of thing. So they yeah, just uh, think that maybe, you know, you make a quick sketch in five minutes and press print and then, you know, this thing is cut out for you. Um, you know, a lot goes into it with, you know, tool paths and all the rest of it there, there, there's so much that goes into it so i think these people they've never done it so they assume it's simple but um, i i but i just i just don't even understand why someone would waste their time saying anything like that like it well, did, like i i think about the motivation in regards to why would somebody even just go out and say something like that i mean i haven't heard a lot of people say and i don't think it happens to everybody like interesting enough you know when you talk about people who get a lot of what they call haters, I don't like to use that word haters. I, I just think that honestly, people just want to be heard. Hmm. But I believe that there's certain people who who attract more of that than others. Like I don't get people giving me too much fritz, you know. Once in a while, a little a nothing. I mean, just nothing, you know, really. But like other people get it so bad, and I just wonder: are they? Are you being attract? Are they attracting this type of person? Um. I'm Are they manifesting it, so it themselves? I'm not hearing it so much. Nobody really. Is, I know, is... but some people get it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I tell you, it's fascinating well, to me. Maybe I tell it's you what all did they make got. Me laugh. They... Is their ability yeah. to cut out <laughs> handle scales, yeah. and so they're holding on to it. But you know, hopefully that person develops more skills, so they're not super proud about how well they're ha cutting out their handle scales. I don't know. 
I mean, it's, e- it's it's far easier to pull somebody down rather than raise yourself up. That's the yeah. way I look at it. And some people are just lazy, and they find well, it's pull them down, but at the same level, and that's you not, wouldn't that's say these things. things to someone's face. No, no, no. Which which makes me laugh actually, because n- not talking about CNC, but I, I I put up this picture. I think it was on my personal Instagram of the uh, the space rock that I'd bought. That's going into this and this knife that I'm making at the moment. This one off knife that I'm mm. making. It's just sort of space themed. And there's a piece of rock from the moon that I'd ordered and it, it, it came in. And this thing is tiny. This thing is tiny because it's super, super expensive to get like a big rock. You're talking probably thousands of thousands of pounds. So yeah. this thing is, is you know, it's it's almost a speck. Um, but there's two of them and they go in the bolster and like clear resin. It looks it is, looks pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I put up this picture on, it was on Twitter. And I'm finding that people on Twitter are very different to people on Instagram. And maybe it's because most of the people who sort of follow me on Twitter are from almost like a past life of mine where I was, you know, doing all web stuff. So that they're, they're not sort of, you know, they're not knife makers like, like my followers on Instagram would be. And um, so I put up this thing about using this piece of space rock for the, from the moon for a knife and things like that. And like the comments, like, well, that's not really from the moon. How can you how can you promise me that's not from the moon? And I'm like, well, it is certified and you can check on the, you know, the meteorological meteorological society website and all the rest of it. And they're like, well, technically, that's not a rock then. If it's come from the moon, it's just like, oh, man, I give it a rest, these people, you know? Dude, I sent you a message because I saw all your assholes on Twitter. Yeah. And all I could think was, who are these motherfuckers and what's going on? Well, who cares? Yeah. That's it, It's really like, who cares? Like, technically, it's space dust. And I it's mean, a collection of stuff that is, and I was just like, oh, Jesus. It's a bit of rock that's come from the moon. The end, I don't know, I don't know what formed that rock. I don't know. It's just, oh, people. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> it's been a while for a good people. I just don't understand people's motivation, to be honest with you. And, I, yeah, and it true. just, like, it baffles me. I see shit that, it you know, irritates me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna like, you know, correct them or or even like say, well, that's not really. Who gives a fuck? Why would I want to get involved in that? It's just yeah. not. It's just. It's a loser. It's a loser. It's a I'm loser of your time and energy. I don't get much of that. To be, I mean, particularly on Instagram, where I think, you know, probably you know, a fair amount of the followers have probably listened to the show anyway, so they know that you know what what we're about and you know we're trying to be better and all the rest of it. Um, so I, I don't really get like stuff like that on Instagram, but Twitter is a different world. I, you know, I didn't use Twitter for years and years, and I'm slowly just you know every now and again I'll just jump on and I'll maybe put something up. But every time there's some sort of sarky comment from somebody, and it's just like whoa, it's a different world. I started Twitter probably almost ten years ago. Yeah, and it was after the Mumbai attacks because I had heard you remember there was a big terrorist. Uh, yeah attack in Mumbai hmm. and I heard that people are using Twitter to communicate. Yeah. So I got on it and um I found it fascinating and then I started to use it very much like if you've ever seen the movie uh, Watchmen or read the comic book Watchmen, Ozzy Mandy is, nah. is the is the uh villain. I don't, I don't listen to uh watch read comics. Right, you never saw the movie Watchmen? No. All right, know, fine. Then, then just leave it alone. I'm like, so I'll explain it. You don't have to watch. So the villain has like multiple, multiple, multiple uh, TV screens, and he's watching them all at the same time with different things, and he's creating this aggregate in regards to what's going on in the world. Mm. And I see Twitter like that. Like I've, you know, you follow people, and then you don't follow people, and then you end up getting your news or news or information so much faster than any other way. Yeah. So yeah. much faster than any other way. Like by a mile, so I've I've liked it for that reason. But saying anything is just it's just like worthless on that fucking platform. Yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy. And anyway, enough about me and my week. What about yours, Jeff? I was sick as a dog uh, halfway through the week, and it was like I actually my uh, my COVID orthodoxy. I had to push my COVID orthodoxy to the limit. I had to take uh, someone to, to a doc, a couple few doctor's appointments. And it was really not what I wanted to do, but there's a big outbreak in the taxi cab services here in, in, in our town. Uh, and I was just like, I'm just going to take myself, take this person myself. And mm. I didn't want to do it. I did it anyway. And then a couple days later, I'm just like, man, I got the chills. Man, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and the next oh. thing you know, I'm at home with a fever and I was on my back for two days. But in my family, you know, if one of us are sick, it becomes very problematic for my wife. So she had to go 
nurse. She's a nurse practitioner at a, at a place and she had to get the rapid test. And then I had to find a place to get the rapid test for COVID just in case, just to kind of kill the doubt that, it, that yeah, I may be able to make sure. Yeah. Right. And, um, found this place and this is going to be something that people are going to be, you know, now because there's, it, there's so much money to be had in testing because people need tests and people are going to need to be tested often. Mm -hmm. So these small places are getting these rapid um, testing machines and like get outfitting with the, all the information. So you can go to like at, at certain, you'll be able to go to like a small farm, a small, you know, mom and pop pharmacy. So I found this rapid mom and pop pharmacy and I made an appointment online and I was in the parking lot and the, this woman came and she was wearing the gown and the face mask and the N95 mask. She rolls the, she says, roll the window down. She tears open the thing and she goes, okay, you're going to, you're going to give this test to yourself. Oh. Said, to myself. Oh. And, I, and she's like, yeah, you're going to give it to yourself because they're not training half these people. And I'm sure these sm small mom and pop places don't want to like, especially if it's freezing out, they don't want to be like, you know, have the shakes and like, you know, poke your eyeball out, you know, so there's a lot less liability. So I said, well, how, how am I going to know if I've put it far enough in? And she goes, oh, I'll know. So I said, so she said, so just start pushing, start pushing it up there and then I'll tell you when, and then start twisting. Uh, oh my God. So I'm putting it up there and, and, and she goes, keep going, keep going. And I got these long nostrils too. So I'm just like, this is just, it's like my eyes are squinting and then my lips are like in that kind of like oof i'm making a yeah. like my face must have been awful and then i'm just <laughs> and i can all i can hear is saying is keep going keep going mm -hmm. and i'm pushing farther 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 and i'm like this is terrible she goes okay now twist 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 now do the other one and i had to do it myself and then it was awful but you know i ended up you know she i got the results back in 10 minutes and it was covid mm -hmm. po uh, negative so that was good and you know but it's like it's a fucking drag. And so I was home and then I just kind of like caught up on nonsense. And then I got back in the shop on Friday and then did a little bit of work. And then here we are feeling good. First, the first day I'm feeling good. Good stuff. Nice but it's like, stuff. you know, between the snow and the, and the sick and it was so it was, turns out it was like a neuro norovirus, which is just like a gut thing. So it's from bad cooking. That, that's what that's for. Listen, listen, oh, and three. You got some fucking nerve. You said that. You said that before. My bad cooking. Get <laughs> out of your mind, man. Own three Lockwood, giving me problems. Whilst we're talking about scores, then um, we managed to get two for two last weekend um, with the with our uh, sports prediction. We certainly did. We did. Pat on the yes. back. <laughs> Big pat on the back. I think we should be doing so. So go ahead. I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should do a, a prediction each week. We'll do it at the end of the show each week, maybe. Yes, but um, anyway, Wales won, um, but they also won yesterday because um, we had a very quick turnaround, six days to play again yesterday and another nail biter and we managed to beat Scotland yesterday. Um, so currently France are playing Ireland, so I don't know the score yet, but I'm going to say Ireland are going to win. Um, that's my prediction. Mm -hmm. There you go. There we go. Combat abrasives make the world's best abrasive belts for knife makers. Available in any size and at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at combatabrasives.com and get 15% off with the promo code KNIFETALK15. Do it now! Do it now. 24 minutes in, it's the first time we've had the word knife spoken on the show. <laughs> Like, um, <laughs> make sure you're getting your abrasives um, from Combat Abrasives. Use Knife Talk 15 and um, you'll get some discounts. Let's get to the main meat of the show. Hey, man, can I ask you a question? So this is the bit where you send in questions and we try our best to answer. Or we, we'll ridicule you or one or the other. We'll, we, yeah, we have fun <laughs> with it. The first one well, is how do you, from... how do they know where to send them the questions to? Craig? Oh, well, we've got a jingle for that. Right. Contact us via DM at Knife Talk on Instagram. It's that easy. There you go. There we go. Caleb's Creek Metalworks says, Hi, KTP crew. Me have question. <laughs> That's a reference to last week where Jeff said metal workers maybe aren't as uh, well-versed at speaking as, as maybe the woodworkers. <laughs> but um, me have question. <laughs> I've recently purchased an even heat LB 22.5 oven, um, aluminium quench plates, and some 440C stainless steel. I'm trying 321 stainless steel, foil rated to 1900 Fahrenheit. 
I'm not sure if this is the right foil. Mm. I have a copy of Knife Engineering by Dr. Laren Thomas that highlights a heat treat recommendation slightly above 1900. Do you have any other suggestion for a good source of information on stainless steel? Um, and he says, thanks. I'm Ryan thinking he's talking about the foil. I think, yes. Yeah, so he's on about the suggestions for the actual foil. Um, 321 stainless steel. I, I, I don't know what I use, to be honest with you. I don't know what it is. I know it's rated to enough that I need, but I'll have to look that up, I'm afraid. Doing a little research, the foil thing is very interesting because you can get... All right, so the reason why you get foil is you, you buy uh, rolls of foil, of stainless steel foil, and then you make these pouches, you stick your stainless steel knives or whatever knife you want in, and the foil creates an oxygen-free environment, so when you're heat treating your knife and you're quenching it, the, you're, when you're heat treating and you're, you're getting it up to temperature, because there's no oxygen, you're limiting the amount of scale you get on the knife, which is great. Right, so for stainless, it's really great, and yeah. for people who use pocket make pocket knives and stuff that you know they have very tiny little parts, you want to make sure that you don't you know you don't have a lot of scale. You want to be cleaning up your, you know your yeah. slip joint lock. Yeah, you're better off with blood on them as opposed to scale, and that's what you'll get with that foil because there's no doubt you're going to cut yourself if oh. you're using that foil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like foil. Razor. I mean, it's like if you ain't cutting yourself up with the foil, you ain't doing it right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know. <laughs> so, I used to buy short stretches of it and then I start to buy rolls and the price difference between the rolls are a lot and there's really I mean the types that I've been seeing based on what I've been looking at there's three two one foil which is um uh it's a it's a it's it goes up to three this particular type of three two one is rated for two thousand degrees and then you can get 309 stainless which can be uh, 309. I'm not 100% sure if the type is the rating, but uh, this I'm on a website that um, has some different uh, points. What you want to do is, is you, you want to look at the rating, and then there's this 309 that goes up to 2240. The move is, and what I learned, and they're both different prices. You know, it's different prices based on how high yeah. you know, the foil goes, can go up to. If you're only going up to a specific temperature... Like, if you're not going past a specific temperature, there isn't really a whole lot of reason to get the more expensive. All right, so if one goes to 2240, but you're staying under 2000, there's not a whole lot of reason why you would, you know, need it, really. I mean, get the one that you're, you know, that you're in your, in your zone. Like, if you're under, if you're at 1950 or whatever, go get to the one that's rated 2000 degrees. So the one you're using, 321, if it's rated to 2000 degrees, I'm under the impression then it's fine. I, I've actually used to get the more expensive one that went up to 2240. And I realized that it was like, I'm not really going up that high. So why do I need it to go that high? So if the lower priced one, the lower rated one is still over my top temperature, that's perfectly fine. Hmm. Does that make sense? Or is that too convoluted? expensive stuff. Yeah, a big roll of stuff can be expensive. I mean, it's not the rolls aren't that bad. I mean, if you get the rolls, you know, hundred, you know, the difference between you know, one hundred and twenty and one hundred and one hundred and thirty and one hundred and sixty-five, it's not the hmm. end of the world. But I forget that sure. you get things far cheaper over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's the point. But <laughs> I mean, the key is, is you want the rating in regards to where, how high you're going to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, well, and it also depends on if you're using it for other aspects of your making. I, I occasionally use uh, the tool wrap, the stainless steel tool wrap foil, um, for my Damascus making and wrapping billets and helping to kind of keep oxygen out of them. Mm. As that's a, a that's also a, a trick that a uh, that's a trick that uh, Steve Schwarzer uses for his canister Damascus. Yeah, he, he uses. uses the, he uses used up stuff. foil. Yeah, the cook stuff. Yeah. Nice. And it, it's as a using it as a barrier, it's great. Right. And so if you're gonna use it possibly some in, in some way for your Damascus, you you might want that higher temperature stuff because you're gonna be welding and, and working your material from a higher temperature. That exactly. So it's really based on the temperature that you're gonna be going for. Yeah. Is really where it is at, and I would highly suggest to not you know our friend Jason uh, Jason Knight, the Forge series, series two has Steve Schwartzer showing you how to do canister Damascus, and he's got a lot of tricks that are pretty cool, and it's definitely if you're into canister Damascus, you want to get there, 
go pick up that go go uh, pick that online class up because he's going to show you how to use that foil. Steve's the OG. He's the man. He's Steve's the, the man. Original. <laughs> All right, ready for another one? All the time. All right, Sierra Valley Forge says hi, guys. Been his business manager slash slash wife here uh, again with a kind of newbie question. My SEO expert who set up all our business accounts on Facebook and Instagram scared the crap out of me with the uh, with the caution that we risk being shut down if we post anything but culinary knives. Uh, I guess it's the rules somewhere. On a daily basis, I see other makers post posting pics of swords, daggers, hunting knives, etc., uh, which we make, but I've been scared to post. Is there a loophole somewhere? I've been shut out of my personal Facebook and Instagram accounts in the past with no recourse, simply for the sin of being a da daughter daughtering old woman who clicked one too many times trying to set things up. I can't afford to have this happen on our business account. Thanks. Hmm, it's a difficult one. This it's uh, it's like the wild wild west on Facebook and Instagram for knives. So, I think it's fine to have an account and just post the stuff. Um, but the, I think the issue is when it comes to like the stores, whether you have a Facebook store and like an Instagram store where you can tag stuff to sell via your website on Instagram, right? Um, because they need to be approved. Um, and it. It, it seems to be a human doing that because sometimes they're approved and sometimes they're not. Um, and it's a real pain. I've stopped doing it now. So I used to, on Instagram, tag a knife um, so people could click on the post and it would take them to the website where they could buy it, which is a really, really nice feature. Um, but probably 70 or 80% of the time, um, that they, they wouldn't be they wouldn't allow it they'd say you know this this is against our terms and conditions sure. so they wouldn't shut the account down they they just take off that tag allowing you to sell um and i know other people do it really successfully um a lot of people spend a lot of time doing it and they seem to get through um as i do maybe 20 25% of the time um so for me i find it's not really worth the extra hassle but it's 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 a real pain because you know they're culinary knives um it's just I think they've got they've got a human there who you know, or a bunch of humans uh, as opposed to a computer um, going through things and approving things and, and non approving things. It's it's just a, yeah. a real pain. And the biggest problem that we particularly with Instagram is there's there's no sort of support. There's no like, you know, help. You know, you can't chat to a member of staff there to, to help you out with something. Um there's just there's just none of that happening so it's a, it's a real pain but um yeah i haven't heard of anybody having their their account sort of closed or anything um but yeah that the whole thing of having your your tags removed from your from your shop and the sort of the selling part of facebook and instagram is, is quite common i'm afraid for for knives right. what's an seo expert search engine optimization expert um so yeah so her just, kid Probably, <laughs> probably, <laughs> or somebody, um, yeah, a snake oil salesman. Basically, they they say, "Oh, we'll get you to the front page of Google," you know, for nineteen ninety nine, and it's like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. I'm afraid. Um, the, the best SEO expert is yourself. You know your business more than anybody else. So yeah, don't pay anybody else to do that stuff for you. Um, just you know, describe your content well, and and you'll you'll be good. I always heard about people being shadow banned and all these like very you know things i i don't really i the, the only time it ever happened where something i posted i posted when i made an the when i made the only acts i ever made for some reason and i like i must have hit something and it was like it got nothing i mean it was like it wasn't even there mm. so i i don't i don't i'm not really well versed in it but i've stopped kind of saying a lot of words that might possibly mm. trigger some kind of like <clears throat> computer yeah. red flag right yeah. You know, so I don't I know. Mean, and in regards that's... to the reason why <laughs> I have the funny thing is, is she said that she she gets uh, <laughs> shut out of her personal FB and Instagram accounts is because she's logging in too many times and, then, and they they cut her off. They cut the I have that happen before with uh, a couple of things. And I put in the put in the, you know, the cap lock buttons on or something like that. And I'm putting her put the password in. I'm putting it right in. It's you know, I'm putting it in right and next thing you know, it's like we're shutting your account down yeah. for a couple of days because somebody's trying to break in. I'm, like, I'm trying to break in, you <laughs> motherfucker you. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a real problem. I said there's no there's that help isn't there. 
right. you know there's no like online chat where you can you can speak to somebody to solve any problems it's just nobody will ever get back to you it gets it when you that there is that i you know i remember i don't remember how long ago it was josh uh josh scott was writing he did something a couple uh maybe even six months ago maybe last, who knows he basically said if you know instagram shits the bed i i need to have a backup plan and i have always thought that there needs i mean my whole business is i mean social media has created this business you know without question and i always think to myself Am I putting too many eggs in one basket? And what am I going to do if, you know, it shits the bed? Or if I yeah. get hacked? Or if I can't get my, my account back? Or, you know, or I change phones and I forgot the goddamn, you know, thing and I can't get back into the goddamn thing. You know, I think about that shit all the time and I don't get sleep sometimes. Hmm. I mean, and I get sleep, but, you know, it just, <laughs> yeah. it can, it's, you know, it is, it is one of those things is like, you know, we've established so much time and energy into our accounts and the followers and the content and all the information and how you can get a hold of me and all that stuff. And if it were to like, you know, at the snap of a finger, I'll go away. Now what? what now what do you do? Right. And it will at some point. I mean, you know, people are using TikTok now and YouTube and all these other other, other platforms. There's always like a, a platform of the month kind of thing. You know, something new, new coming up. And I think Instagram isn't going to be what it is for us in, you know, in well, however many years time. But it's so it's lasted a lot. I mean, it's I mean, I've been in, I've been involved with it for nine years. I mean, yeah, it's been a, I it's mean, been it has a, been. But I mean, if you look at like like Facebook, um, Facebook, like everybody was on Facebook, everybody, you know, from grandparents to, you know, to, to, to sort of school kids. And now school kids don't use Facebook. They're all over TikTok. Um, and people are just leaving in droves because they're hearing of all the security issues and all the rest of it as well. Um, so people, you know, for some people, the whole web was just Facebook. They got all their news. They got everything from Facebook. And people are leaving that, that platform in droves now. And, you know, Instagram is owned by Facebook as well, remember. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, like you said, put all your eggs in one basket. So I think, you know, get your own website and put your own stuff up there and use social media then just to push people to your website. I think that's that's the game, mm. I think. Well, I think something that Jeff's done a good job of is diversifying how people find him and or know who he is. And um, hmm. so the video he did with, uh, oh, shit, now I can't think of it, Epicurious video. Yeah, uh, you can't think of it because nobody bought a fucking knife from it, so I didn't do <laughs> no, that but, much diversifying. Well, you've also been featured in the Michelin Guide. You've been featured so on... So have you. yeah. But I mean, you've been in the, the the Westchester magazine. I mean, you've you people fucking find thing. and hear. You mean that fucking that fucking I'm George Fader, that, that fucking, that fucking <laughs> yeah. White Plains dentist office bullshit that you put under your fucking parrot? That I have been back to that fucking magazine. I blasted them and then poof, I'm done with it. I ain't getting the best of nothing from them. I'm, I'm getting the best saying. of fuck you from them. You Sorry. are doing things <laughs> to make yourself. <laughs> Uh, Fuck Westchester so, so Magazine. You you could be found <laughs> in other ways other than social media. Fuck them. Uh, yeah. Jeff Jeff appears on every podcast known to man. Not anymore. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I'm saying no. I say no all the time now. No, <laughs> it's enough. But, but yeah, it it is it is a worry that you know sure. you just putting all your eggs in one basket is is you know that is a massive worry. But at the moment, certainly, I think for knife makers, there's a huge community on Instagram for sure, um, and it, it's obviously worth putting a bit of effort into that. Well, and people use Instagram almost like an image search anymore these days, and so mm. I think it's still valuable to be on there as long as you know you can. I, I I'm with Jeff though. I've been careful about how like what terms I'm using, and I think it's smart that Jeff has names for his knives because instead of calling it such and such knife or such and such whatever, he can just call it by call it the Admiral. He can call it well, you know whatever name he wants to give him the Sidewinder, any of that stuff. Uh, I've been yeah. careful to use non knife terms. Uh, I'll use like project instead of referring to you know this blade or this knife build or whatever you know referring it to as a project or other or if it's a gyudo then i'll call it a gyudo if it's a, a european chef's knife i just call it european chef or a euro for short you know stuff like that to just keep those kind of terms that might be red flags for um platforms like facebook and instagram and other platforms yeah um yeah just so i can people can keep seeing your stuff um 
But yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, we we don't really have much control over. I'm afraid. No, not at all. It's not a okay. public utility. Knife Talk is sponsored by Even Heat, the manufacturers of the finest heat treating ovens available. Find your next oven at evenheat-kiln.com. To the chopper! Get yourself an Even Heat. Um, and actually, we can get you a discount on Even Heat too. If you head over to Soul Ceramics um, or look at the uh, the show notes, we'll put a link down there, which will give you a promo code directly within the link with Soul Ceramics. So when you check out, you'll get $75 off any of their ovens um, and free shipping in, in the US as well. Um, and they've got the, they've got the, the whole stock of Even Heat ovens there, and you you can sort of configure it yourself, so you can have you know the tap controls and all these different things. Um, so yeah, give go and have, take a look. Soul Ceramics, um, they got a bunch of even heats in, um, and you can get your discount. Um, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Um, the link is in the show notes, or you can go to knifetalk.net forward slash heat, and that'll automatically apply a discount for you. You know, we get so many downloads. I'm surprised we only have 7,000 followers on Instagram. If we got to that 10, we could just do a swipe knife out. Talk account, yeah. We could just do a swipe out. It would be so much easier. So if anybody, if you're listening and you have Instagram, go give us a follow. We'll make It'll make these Good point. these link outs way easier for everybody. That's yeah. a fucking good, good point. We never, we never push out Instagram for Knife Talk apart from getting people to send us questions. That's a good point. That's a fucking good point, man. We, and then we can then then we can really bill our sponsors. We can give them <laughs> fucking really bill them. <laughs> um, and with that said, I just I wanted to give a little bit of a uh, you know you know I didn't I didn't I know you didn't ask, but um, this came from Mad Knives. He uh, if you have some unsolicited advice, feel free to send it in, and you know every so often we'll pepper it in if they're good. They haven't they've been fine. So congratulations, everybody! You're, you're getting a passing C plus in regards to some of the, some of the things. But this one actually is, uh, this is about. Uh, uh, we were talking about contact wheels, you know, in regards to why you would use a serrated one over a a, 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 a solid one. And Mad Knives says, "Hey, all, I wanted to chime in on the serrated wheel conversation. The serrations add the aggressiveness of the abrasive by allowing the belt to flex into the voids of the wheel." and expose more acute cutting surface. Think of a fingernail trying to scratch a lottery ticket as opposed to a stubby, chewed-up nail trying to remove material. As always, love the podcast uh, to pass the time in the shop. Mm. I got gotcha. you. Mm, never thought of it that Me way. Me neither. I don't know. Mm. This is also, this is also uh, unverified. It's unsolicited <laughs> advice. So when I read this unsolicited advice, I'm, I'm saying, sounds, I don't know. So I guess he knows what he's talking about. He's got knives yeah. in the name of his, you know, Instagram feed. So he's the official. He's a certified knife. That's man. it. That's all you need. A for, you have forge. You have forge in your handle. Knives in your handle, or metalworks in your handle. You're obviously an expert. I, I, you know what you're doing. I'm giving you the I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Uh, we've had another one from Bob Ryan. Um, when you first make contact with a potential customer, do you ease into the conversation slowly to feel them out? <laughs> what? Or do you hit them with all the information, options, and choices right at the beginning? Uh, when I'm a customer, I prefer to get my info fast and get the ball rolling, but I'm starting to realize some people can get intimidated by this and pushed away. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Um, thanks, Bob. Um so yeah, so let's say um, let let's say you get an email coming in, um, and I know Jeff, you you've got you work with somebody who handles your emails for you. Um, what do you do? If somebody says, oh, you know, I'd want a knife. Um, they haven't given you a budget. They haven't told you what they're after. I just want a chef knife from from you. Is your response to go straight in with with pricing and availability, or do you sort of build up a, a rapport first? Well, here's the thing that. Um... I lost where this guy is. What's his name? Bob Ryan. Bob. If you have a website with all the information, then you can put him to that. I would. I think that the best thing you can do with a website is to try to give as much information as easily to read as possible. And then before you have to go back and forth, you can send it to that. And with that said, nobody likes to read. Nobody reads. And nobody likes to follow directions. <laughs> So even though you can send them the link to all the information and then they have the ability to look it over before you give them the old, you know, 
two gun salute. You you can you know they can help be they can on their own time give you the information. I we have now links that allow me to just like send people links, which is great. Um, but I was actually when I was reading that question, I was thinking more along the lines of when you're talking to someone, and I'm fascinated because most knife makers are uh, are solitary people, and they get into knife making as a hobby, and maybe they're not known for their customer service in terms of talking to people. And then when you start to talk to someone, you do need to have a degree of being able to explain yourself and your products in a way that is not like disarming nor intimidating. I think that it's very important. I do, we do a, when somebody buys a knife, when they get in the line, I give them a call and we have like a, we'll have like a consultation. Because there is stuff that you just have to be able to explain to people in, uh, on the phone. It's just go back and forth with the emails sometimes. Nonsense. I do have like a, I do have a way, I try to think about the easiest and most non-intimidating way to talk to people because it definitely makes them feel more at ease. And the more easy you can make them feel and give them information at the same time, the less time you're going to have to be on the phone with them. So it got to the point where with these, with these consultations, I used to look at the clock and I used to see how long it took me to get through all this information because I think it's real important. At the same time, you don't want to talk to people like, you don't want to talk to them like that they're the idiots that they are. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows. You know. People. You know. I'm, I'm surprised you do that. So you have a call with every customer. When right, they buy, you uh, you, not... No, not every customer, but like when we do the custom stuff, like if they buy the standard shit, you're not getting a call from me, you know, and then, yeah. but some of the stuff we'll do, and then it, it's not as much anymore because we're kind of pushing people towards, um, we're pushing people towards buying this, you know, just, bu you know, pre-ordering the standard stuff. Yeah. But if there's like, you know, it gets to the point where sometimes, you know, most of my customers are first time knife buyers. So I want to make them feel comfortable and not nervous. And I don't want to talk to them in a manner that they are like, you know, I'm, I'm too good for them. So it's, it's usually, I, I think it's very important. I think it's made me better in terms, you know, made me better in terms of uh, communicating too. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. What about you, Mareko? Because you, you've got a list of people and, you know, they could have contacted you for a knife, you know, a number of years ago. Do you then make contact again just before you start making the knife? How, how does that sort of relationship work? Yeah, definitely. I usually I try to get a hold of uh, whoever's coming up in the next month um, or two. That's when I start reaching out to people to start solidifying those emails and just reconnecting with people and and you know offering a little like small chat uh, just to uh, you know re kind of introduce yourself i guess to them or reacquaint yourself with them um because it, for me it, it has been a couple of years since i've had contact with these people usually and um and but yeah i just kind of like my original um before i closed down my books now not oh, sorry let me back up now that my books are closed i just kind of have a, a blanket email i refer them uh you know i thank them for their interest but and then i refer I explain my situation with the backlog and the books being closed and I refer them to my email. And it's very simple. It's not a long, it's one paragraph, very simple, very clear. Um, people can decide to sign up for the email list or not. Um, but before I had all that going, I, I basically had a very similar thing where, you know, I thank them for their interest. Um, I kind of go through very briefly, um, you know, kind of some of the design details and, and information that I'll need from them. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of, uh, of a commonly ordered knife with, um, not necessarily getting into the details of the wood or any of that stuff, but just like the basic about the blade and the length and all that kind of stuff in Damascus or whatever. And then, and give a price point and then, and then I'll just say, you know, simply, I, I look forward to your feedback. And at that point, you know, they, I, I give them a price at that point so that they, they can make the decision if they really are re ready to move forward or not. Otherwise, you know, we don't need to waste any more of it, either side's time, really, because um, I'm sure we both got yeah. plenty of better things to do. So I try to I try to rip that tape off um, as quickly as possible. Um, and, and and again, but it's super brief. It's not a long email. It's it's 
one or two very short paragraphs um and that's it simple and sweet and then yeah. if thing, somebody wants to go very, forward you made a very good point i was just gonna say if they do want to go forward then we start having the conversation like jeff is talking about uh i i haven't had i've had a few phone calls um just because either somebody requested it or i felt in the communication um there was some there are issues in understanding stuff and so then we get on the phone but otherwise we just iron out some of those details in through email and then talk again later once get rocking and rolling you made a very good point that we had to change the way we're doing stuff because i don't talk to people until they've paid and the problem is is because i've actually had a few conversations a number of years ago Tony sets me up with someone. I'm making a, making the call. Guy starts talking, starts telling me that when I cut my protein, I like to use and give me the bullshit. And then I'm on the phone. And then after 30 minutes, I realize this guy just wants to talk to someone. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. literally like, you know, when the, you know, I know my carbon steel, when I'm using my carbon steel, I only use it for white proteins, but the red proteins, I, I'm like, what the fuck am I getting myself? So I got off the phone with the guy, he didn't buy shit. And I called Tony, I'm like, yo, we got to figure something out. You can't, you can't, you can't hang, hang me out like this with these maniacs who are lonely. Yeah. It's true. You're I mean, this guy was like, operator. I mean, it was like, it was like. He just wanted to be on the phone and ask me a million questions. And then the questions just were just like, I'm like, oh, you wanted to have a conversation. Oh, you know, I, 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 I buy only the best German steel. And I, it's all forged. Get the fuck out of here, man, with your protein and your forged. Get the fuck. Seriously, these people are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to, um, whether somebody reaches out by email or Instagram or whatever it is, um, I'll tend to show them an example of something with a picture and a price. Um, almost immediately that, that you know if, if they're interested they don't say you know it depends what you're after but if something like this would for example be x you know um and you know you're ghosted a lot of the time some people you just never hear from again um but you know if they are interested they know a price they they know where they're going they you know what sort of ballpark they're in um yeah and i mean there's been times when you know i work slightly different to you guys i don't have a, like a customer list as such that i'm, that I'm sort of working through um so it's it is slightly different, but uh, for example, the the space knife which I talked about last week, um, I've had like three or four people reach out and say, you know, how much is this? Is it available yet? And I'm like, well, I don't want to sort of pre-sell it until it's finished, if that makes sense. So so what I've said to them is, look, this is this is this is the price. This is what it'll be, um, but um, you know, it won't be available until it's finished, until you've seen pictures and all the rest of it. Um, Come on, tell less... the truth. No, seriously. You're going to fucking it's, sell it's, it's, before it's, you tell You're going to sell it before you give the fucking time. No, seriously. You're going to fucking give him the whale treatment. You're going to sell it out from one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Again, that was finished first. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sell, sell it on Friday. Meanwhile, the money came on Thursday. Come on, man. <laughs> tell the truth. I do, I, no, I mean, I, I sold it before I said I was going to sell it with the whale, yeah. one, to be fair. Um, but um, I, I, I don't work well under stress of... It's nobody nobody's seen this knife yet so um you know now i have to sort of deliver it so i want i want to make sure they've they know what they're buying if you know what i mean so even if i do a batch of knives i'll generally finish the prototype and i'll do a few first put the pictures up on the website then you know then they're for sale um it's yeah it's, it's a difficult one everybody's different the way the way they sort of sell um but yeah i personally think getting a price in early um, you can then rule out a lot of people who maybe just time wasters or, you know, not so much time wasters, but it's not for everybody. That That's yeah. the thing. And, you know, if you say, you know, you know, a few hundred dollars or, you know, in, in Morocco's cases, a few thousand dollars, if it's not within their, their price range, well, then, you know, you, you, you've stopped any, any further work. I have a time waster story that was so annoying. And part of it was our fault and part of it was her fault. So this person wanted to buy something and then we're, you, you, I don't know what happened. And um, we couldn't get back to her. We were, got back to her, and then we couldn't get back to her. Got back to her, got back to her, back to her. I started seeing these messages saying, um, don't you want my business? And, and what about, 
you know, hello. <laughs> there was one that just said hello. <laughs> it said email us a hello. And then we finally got back to her. I went up talking to this person for a while and she was just like, you know, I apologize that, you know, maybe we, I gave her a little extra service because I felt bad that, you know, something got, you know, tangled up in the wires mm -hmm. and, um, gave her the full, you know, I gave her the full red carpet treatment and everything like that and gave her all the pricing and the information. And I set her up with, a, you know, all this stuff and stuff like that. And then she didn't call him back for a month. Oh <laughs> it God. was like she gave us all this fucking fritz. And then yeah. I gave her the full treatment and then nothing. It, these people, they the ghosting thing is real. And it's like oh, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got yeah. to figure out a way to weed those people out that is chain i mean that is the biggest problem that the those time vampires are the ones that yeah. that fuck your business up because it, yeah. it it the problem is is you're in you're in charge of what you're doing and you're making everything you can and you're making this product or whatever it is then you have to be a knife you're, you figured it out you're doing a great job people want it you'll be able to sell it you figured out all the problems and then you've got to deal with these things that are out of your control and the number one thing is your goddamn customers. Yep. Fucking annoying. And uh, one thing to consider as well, it's not always a price thing. So, you know, so people will contact you and they'll say, you know, a knife and you'll send them details of you know, stuff you've done. I'll give them a price, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes it's not just the price. Sometimes they're like, well, could you do, for example, like a Japanese style knife? And I'm like, well, I, I, I don't, to be honest. That's not what I do. It's not the sort of style of stuff that I do. So, you know, I'll, I'll quite often refer them off then to another maker. Um, but again, it's, it stops that contact then. It stops this whole trail of emails happening because they know, well, I, I don't do that. And, and, you know, and somebody else will. It's better than, you know, three or four emails down the line. They say, okay, then I'm happy with the price now if you could just make me this Japanese-style cleaver or something. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. you know, so you yeah, head that off at the pass, you know. And yeah. quite often I'll, have, I'll pass them off to, to other makers. I don't have an issue with that at all. That is right. one of the interesting things too. Somebody follows you for a while. I get these messages I've been following you for a while. You see what you've done. I love this. I love this. I love this. I want to buy a knife. Can you make something different? That mm -hmm. shocks me. Like every time it's like, <laughs> but, but if you know what I do, why would I, Yeah. why would yeah. I do something completely different? Or, or why, why would you want me to do something completely different? Is, are you getting some sort of, you know, special custom experience? Is that what you want? Something different than everybody else? You know? We gotta do that all the time, or I have to write. I don't. I don't do that. I just. It's not really what I do. If you like my shit, buy my shit. If you don't like my shit, find some other shit. Just as a sort of PR exercise, maybe stop calling it shit. Right. <laughs> well, that's probably a good. Idea. I mean, listen. Probably I'm in a safe idea. space here. I'm in a safe space here. I figured. I. Th I didn't realize that. That. Speaking of which, I must say, I apologize to the listeners. Sometimes I forget that you are actually listening to this, and I will say something about someone. I won't say their names, but I will ultimately always get a DM apologizing, and I end up apologizing, and it's this like apology back and forth tennis match. And I, in, in regards to that, I get too comfortable, and sometimes I'll say something that I didn't think you were going to hear. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Okay, let's move on. You you uh, read the next one if you can, Jeff. Okie doke. Mike Malakote. Mike Malakote says, hey, guys, I have a Damascus question. After heat treat, hand sanding, and I etch, I notice a light spot in the middle of the pattern. Is this where it didn't fully harden? Uh, put it in coffee overnight, and after a quick polish, it is now darker. I'm confused. Do you think I need to reheat treat? Thanks for your help. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so I would say, um, it depends. It could be, uh, an improperly or an, I guess not completely hardened, uh, knife. It also could be a, a bit of decarb on the surface of the knife. Uh, and especially in Damascus, uh, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's weird looking. It's like, it's almost, almost like grainy coarse, um, looking brighter portion of the pattern. Um, that just doesn't etch right. And my my initial hope would be that it's just a little decarb that you got to get through. Um, and so you, unfortunately, they've done they've gone through all the work of of hand sanding and etching and stuff. But you might have to go all the way back to getting on the machine. I would start um, with as 
uh, as least invasive of a process as possible, which would be hand sanding to get back in there and try to clean things out. Um, but it's hard to see, but whether you're on a machine or hand sanding, it's hard to see um, if you've gotten through it. And so, because uh, uh, you got to, if you're trying to just work through the decarbon in, in one little spot, you got to have uh, some acid handy to just kind of dip it in there and take a look. Not a long dip, just a quick dip to see if you've gotten through it. And then once you feel like you've gotten through it, then you pull it out and rehand sand the whole thing um, and move forward as like, like normal. Um, if it is a, a blade that's not fully hardened, if it's a, for some reason, a weird um, island of unhardened material, I would say more than anything, it, it, the proximity to the cutting edge would be my biggest concern. If it's within half an inch of the cutting edge, um, meaning a half an inch or less, I would be concerned that it, that is you, you're gonna you're kind of selling a faulty product if if you don't have at least a half an inch of material, um, because as that knife is used. It's going to need to be resharpened. As it's resharpened, you're losing material. Depending on who's sharpening that knife will also determine how much of that material is removed, you know? And so, um, you know, I, hopefully, I guess it's going to take a while inch, to get that half inch there. Right. But if this is something that, you know, that versus a, a fully hardened blade, you know, that fully hardened blade, you could grind all the way down to the spine and still have a little toothpick of something that could cut stuff right um and so i i think at least a half inch is is a reasonable amount for the prices that people are paying for custom stuff um if it's and if it's outside of that half inch then great that's a, and if you can get it to look similar to the rest of the blade then i think that's great too so um that would be that would buy, be my move uh is First, where is it at on the blade exactly? And then second, uh, if it, you, you need to try to, quote unquote, dig it out, if it's unhardened or if it's a decarb, then do that. And if it's not decarb, then you might have to make some hard choices of either maybe starting over or reheat treating the knife. I don't know. Which, But if you've already finished ground it, especially if it's a chef's knife, that could be pretty damn uh, hairy situation. Because uh, your material is more likely to warp and wiggle and ribbon um, in those thinner cross sections of the, especially along the edge. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope, it's Geico. Uh, yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There we go. There we go. I'm not adding to that. Um, I want to tell you about the the sandpaper that we use, which is made by Indasa. It's Rhino Wet. It's the best stuff out there. Um, it saves you time. Therefore, it saves you money. We all use it. I know a lot of our users already use it, too. Uh, but we can get you a discount. If you head on over to Texas Fire Supply and put in Knife Talk 10, you'll get 10% off. So they, they've got all the grits there. Um, so head on over. Uh, make sure you fill up your cart with Indasa Rhino Wet. But also the other stuff that they sell. So Texas Fire Supply is not just farrier stuff. Lots of stuff for knife makers. They've got a whole knife making section. Go take a look. Make sure you check out. Use Knife Talk 10 and get that discount. And when you're filling out the Rhino Wet on Texas Fire Supply... 50 sheets are in a sleeve, so they're going to ask you per, per, per piece, 50, if you put in 50, you won't be getting 50 sleeves of Rhino Wet, you'll be getting a mm. one sleeve of Rhino Wet. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's, they get that's get yourself a whole mind. sleeve, a whole, yeah, 50 sheets. For sure. 220, try the 220, at least, at the very least, get the 220, and then you decide. That's pretty sweet. There you go. I'll tell you something I've been doing lately with my hand sanding. I, I at least did it on this last knife. Um, you can get this, these felt pads that are used for kind of cushioning the furniture, uh, like the feet of your furniture and the and a hardwood hmm. floor or something. And I cut a little strip and I stuck that to my hand sanding stick for just the last light strokes. And boy, did it 
satin out really nicely. Uh, it looks really great. So a little bit of a, a squishier backing on your hand sanding stick um, for those final strokes at 800 or 1,000 or wherever you're finishing at. It's a good look. Nice. 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 Who wants to take the next I'll, one I'll from take, Jeffrey Newmark? I'll take the next one. Let's see. From Jeffrey Newmark. He says, hey, cuties. Uh, you talked about whether or not you need heat treat uh, need to heat treat an oyster knife this week. And I was wondering if you had any input on steel for a bottle opener uh, and if it should be heat treated. I've got a bunch of smallish scrap pieces of 1084 and ABL that are uh, about the perfect size to make little keychain bottle openers. However, I don't have my own forge, so I'm... Uh, so it's definitely not the most cost effective to send them out to have them heat treated uh, if it's necessary. Do you think they would hold up at all as they are? So not in their non heat treated form. Uh, I'd love to be able to reduce waste in the shop and get as much out of my materials as possible. That's very understandable. Jeffrey you Newmark, think? you're in fucking business. You do not have to heat treat bottle openers. 100%. Don't. You most most blacksmiths are making bottle openers are using mild steel. In a few circumstances, Jesse Savage made me this really awesome bottle opener that had a like a carabiner end on it. He, he had to use 1045 just to make sure that it wouldn't uh, bend. But I've made very very thin bottle openers out of mild steel, and from opening a bottle, you know you can use mild steel. So if you got uh, 1084 and AEBL for opening a bottle, you don't need to heat treat shit. Nope. I mean, if it's Damascus, sometimes you might want to heat treat it just to make the the you might just to make everything pop a little bit more. I've yeah. been I've been told that if you heat treat Damascus bottle openers and you clean them up after you heat treat them, the etch comes out nicer. But you don't have to do that either. Yeah. Nice. Good news for Jeffrey. Jeffrey's in, you're in biz, babe. It's a, it's it's the scrap in scrap in business for <laughs> you're you. You're in biz, babe. <laughs> scrap in scrap in <laughs> scrap in is now a money maker. You're in biz, babe. You're in biz, babe. Okay, JVB knives says here's a dilemma. Someone tells you that they didn't like a previous knife they bought from you, then messages you again, commissioning a knife to be made. Should you do it after the amount of childish complaining they do or did? <laughs> Tough customers. Yeah. Wow. Customers, yeah. This is not a crazy question. Um, I, Yeah, so so you had a customer who didn't like a previous knife that, that he'd made for them, but then they come back and said, could I have another knife? Could you make me another knife? Um, I suppose it depends how you left it. If they weren't happy and you sort of resolve the situation and they come back, yeah, great. Um, if you know you left with some bad blood, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's a weird one. I, I don't understand why they'd come back to you to begin with. But I assume there's no bad blood between you if they've come back for another one. So yeah, take the money. You're in business, babe. <laughs> <laughs> some people are difficult, and they're they're used to being difficult, and you just everybody is different. I had uh. I don't know if I told this story or not before, but back in the day when I was doing you know, railing jobs in Brooklyn, I did some samples for a customer. And then, uh, no, I didn't do the samples first. I made a design. They wanted me to design uh, uh, something. And I did this huge drawing and all this stuff and stuff like that. And for some, for somebody, somebody told me to like, somebody told me to send them a bill. And I send them a bill, and then I got fucking screamed at over the phone. Who do you think you are for sending me a bill for a drawing? Blah, 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 blah. Laced me out. Laced me out. I didn't get the job. Who do you think you are? Laced me, laced me, laced me. And then I'm thinking, all right, well, I don't have to deal with this person again. Not so fast. This woman, a couple months later, asked me for a uh, bill, uh, you know, give me putting bids on other jobs. You know, there are people who are completely unreasonable and then I get some amnesia when they think they get a good price. Yikes. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think you can, I mean, you just, you have to figure it out. We have a couple customers who are, you gotta, you gotta like, they bought a pile of stuff and we know it's, things are going to be difficult and we know that there's going to be at least a few tiny issues 
and the they'll, the person will come back, and the money's good. Mm. So whatever yeah, you want to put into it. Yeah, yeah. Morocco, have you had that? Like a return customer, somebody who hasn't been 100% happy, but then they come back, and it's just a little confusing. Yeah, I had a guy um, a while back who – who so there's this forum called the Kitchen Knife Forums. This is like pre-Facebook social media kind of shit. Um, and, um, and what he would do is he would buy knives from custom makers. He would use them for stupid shit like cutting food and judging the knife on how how well it cut food food that he didn't even cook himself like he it's nothing he would ever eat so he did these ridiculous nonsensical cutting videos and then he'd talk shit about the knives basically and tear them apart and then return the knives but uh, but on the forums he would never say that he returned a knife so it looked like he had this vast array of all these custom knives this is this is the only uh yeah this is the only time i've i've had a, anybody return a knife and um and he but he was also a huge pus, pain in the ass pus in the ass too uh like i had close to 200 email exchanges with this fucking guy like oh. you talk about jeff you talk about somebody just looking for somebody to talk to this guy went into his life story um issues with his wife and problems with his mother-in-law and i'm just like what the fuck is all this i i'm just trying to make a knife for you man and um so anyways this guy sends the knife back because he wasn't happy with how it performed even though it was a beautiful knife and jeff you've actually seen this knife um Actually, it was the uh, the Damascus piece that I I didn't do the contrast etch on. That as you use the knife, it, the kind of the contrast would come out in the blade from uh, like a while back. Oh, that was the one that said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and so <clears throat> and you know whoever the oh actually your favorite guy Salt Bay owns that knife now. <laughs> he he. <laughs> Is, it wasn't Salt Bay who. who no, it wasn't it. Salt Bay. <laughs> Salt Bay, go ahead. Keep, tell, tell, finish, finish the story. Yeah. So, you know, I I blacklisted him basically. I because he, he actually got back to me and he said, you know, maybe after you've figured it out a little bit more, I'll, I'll come back and get another knife for you. I was like, fuck <laughs> you. I didn't say that. I just I just ignored his email. But I, in my brains, I was like. Fuck this guy. I'm never selling him another fucking knife in my life. And I'm telling all my other custom knife maker friends to blacklist his <laughs> ass too. He can go fuck himself because of what he does. Because he's taking these knives, making it look like he has this awesome collection when all he does is talk shit and then returns the knives. And he got pissed at me because I wouldn't pay for the shipping on the return like from fucking Singapore. I was like, no, bro, you're paying for that. You, it was the worst. So what? It was that a hard lesson is a learned. Terrible experience. Yeah, it was fucking terrible. It was a hard lesson learned. And if I get those kind of vibes from anybody, I'm not building them a fucking knife because I do not want to deal with that shit ever again. That's also hmm. a tough conversation too. Yeah. Is how do you fire your customer? Yeah. Yeah. How do you do it where it's like, you know. I mean, you could try to be nice, like they, like could, what Craig was saying. You know, this this isn't what I do. I, I'm happy to refer you to somebody else if it is as long as things are <laughs> still nice. Yeah, or you can do the classic sort of pricing yourself out of it. So, um, you know, yeah, I could do that, but it would cost you know whatever. Sure. Um, and then if they do come back, they still say yes. Well, you know, everything's good because you're getting paid extra for sure. dealing with that extra shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're not obliged to work for anybody. You no. know, most of us work for ourselves. We're not working for you know the man. We're working for ourselves. So it's up to us what we take on, and um, how we you know how we see our schedule is is completely up to us. I have the crazy way a customer of mine approached me. That is like this is going to be this is the customer issue of uh, knife talk. By the way, <laughs> I had this one customer who had seen that I made a knife for a famous person, and they just they went into my dms and said just like this i know i'm not famous enough for you to sell me a knife but i would <laughs> love for you i know you only make knives for famous people and i am not famous 
but I was wondering if you'd make me, and then gives me this litany of things they want. And I'm just like, I'll make you a fucking knife. Your money's green. I'm no problem. But it was this strange, like, hmm. like very passive aggressive. Like, I'm not famous enough. I know you only make knives for famous people. I'm just this piece of shit. But it was just like, it was like, calm down, Gladys. We're going to fucking make you a knife. Aye, aye, aye. And then after, you know, back and forth, back and forth, go, you know, all of a sudden Gladys is gone. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird one. If they, you know, if I said that, that you've got to assume there's no bad sure. blood there. So you know, I don't feel obliged to, but yeah. I don't see a problem in taking taking. Yeah, and P.S. Like God advice the most, which is that just charge them more. <laughs> if you don't, uh, dude, <laughs> do you don't charging? want them to be a pain in the ass? Charge them more. That's the that's the move. Give them a price, and it makes it not a big problem. But back to Salt Bay. How come? <laughs> how come? I love that dude. <laughs> how come? How come that? He, he is a, he is quite a muscle, isn't he? He like <laughs> he that boy that boy's like that boy's like some child that got bit by some bugs. He's swollen. That boy's okay. swollen and sinewy. Why why is he getting out these cheap out of the out of the plastic box knives? If he got one of yours, I'd have yours on the hip. He's got a huge collection. He's got like and and none of them are those. <laughs> <laughs> like plastic Cisco knives or whatever. They, uh, they, yeah, I don't know why. He's got like 80, like 50, 80 knife collection. Maybe, possibly even more than that. Still a weird guy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just definitely intentional in that, that weirdness and so on. It's, you know, the whole wow. It's all that's the only thing he does good. Put on. He's wow. The wow yeah, he, twir- he twirls up his face and says, wow. That's the wow. best thing he does. <laughs> the squeezing of the meat and the and the thrusting his pelvis when he's cutting <laughs> is so grotesque, but not as bad as how he uh, there's nobody cooks oh, a hamburger it. worse than Salt Bay. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Cuts the motherfucker in two and then puts him back on. Get the fuck out of here, man. And then he squeezes all the cheese out of it. Stop oh, yeah, jizzing that, all over the food for Christ's that's sakes. Anno- that's annoying. <laughs> I'd be pissed. It's annoying. Yeah. Why are you squeezing everything, you motherfucker? I want to yeah. eat it nice. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, and a lot of people are doing that on Instagram with their with their meat, oh. squeezing all the juice out. And then oh, oh P- and stop. then the barbecue guys, they like to yeah. slap the the uh, they like to slap slap the rump and wiggle <laughs> they like it, to and slap it the brisket, and, yeah. and then making the and then they say, "I'm making the brisket twerk." No, you're not. You're making a dead piece of animal. Don't sexualize it. It's already gross. We don't have to get into necrophilia for Christ's sakes. <sighs> <sighs> oh, calm down, Jeff. I'll tell you what you can do. Tell me about your grinder. That'll oh, calm you down. baby. Broadbeck Ironworks. I just got a call. I got a, I owe, I owe Vince tried to give me a call. He left me this beautiful message thanking us because we're moving product, guys. If you're listening to Knife Talk and you're buying the Broadbeck Ironworks two by 72 grinder i salute you we all salute you they're happy this podcast is pushing out grinders so thank you to the customers but it's an awesome grinder i love mine that's my number one grinder for sure get the vfd get yourself that long platen get yourself a couple there different arms it's very versatile do it sideways do it uh, horizontally vertically no problem uh, it's a fucking awesome grinder and if you put in knife talk 10 you get 10 percent off and the shipping is included. You put it together, but it's easy put together. Um, all your arms are very uh, user friendly for other, if you have another grinder company, they're pretty standard. You can just buy all their uh, grinder parts. Excellent value. We're moving grinders. We thank you, Broadbeck Ironworks. They just sent me my Broadbeck's Ironworks flag that I just hung up in the shop. And uh, I am very happy and they're very happy. So let's all stay happy. Yeah, and if you are buying a grinder, why wouldn't you buy one of them anyway? Let's face it. That's it. Anyway, oh, yeah. anyway, let's move on. To, have we got any more tips? Anybody send any um, more tips? Let's see here. Let's let's see here. Um. Okay. Um. This one comes from Philip. I'm trailing behind an episode, so here's my unsolicited advice. When starting out forging knives, you need to learn to let go. Start over or move on from a knife after working on it for too long. 
Uh, you'll learn more from the next one if you keep on forging the current. You won't learn as much if you keep on forging the current one. And then he's from Sweden, and he says uh, it is definitely pronounced Ikea, not Ikea. That was another one. <laughs> that was a big one. Um, David Pinn says, I don't know. I, I know you didn't ask, but if you have a dog, keep it on a leash in public. I don't care how well trained your dog is. I don't need your dog running towards me, my wife, or our two small children and our dog. Our dog got attacked on a doorstep a few months ago, which made, me, made her super skittish around other dogs. Keep your dog in a leash and stay away from us. I'm straight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here, and the last one I'll give you, unless you want more. <laughs> it's up to you. Go for it. What last one? Go on. Well, uh, Randy uh, Ryark, Reich Art says, The most annoying, th- most am- annoying thing, I offered someone a knife as a gift, and then they turned around and started asking if I have one with an inch longer blade. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, if someone gives you something for free, you don't get to start picking and choosing. Ha ha. That shit happens all the time. You People Looking get fucking... I'll tell mouth. you, my, my least favorite customer of all time. Least favorite. But I did learn a lot from this customer. Got a free gift. Got a, free, a gift certificate, free knife. This is a long time ago when we first started doing gift certificates. I gave him the thing, da 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 they started making changes as I was making it and asking me why I can't do this. And I get, this is a free gift and I deserve to get this. And this person who was getting this free gift was such an asshole. And this is the one who said to me, I, you know, sent them a message saying how I put the touch mark on. They said, well, what about my touch mark? And they wanted their uh, <laughs> initials. And this is, I said, I can do two. I want three. I want three initials. This was such a fucking pain in the ass person back to pain in the ass customers. And then I remember them sending it back because they wanted a scratch taken out based on the way they tried sharpening it. And it was like, some of these people are fucking bananas. Yeah, I've had that before. Somebody um, just completely fucking up the knife, trying to sharpen it themselves, then sending it back. You said, you talked about it might be a family member, right? A friend of a family member, yes, yeah. <laughs> that was a that was an awful. That was an awful, awful story. Awful, awful. Let's change the subject. <laughs> okay, you got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, the bike shop says, "Hey man, can I ask you a question? You gentlemen and your podcast have been extremely helpful to me and others as we've gone down this crazy path that is bladesmithing. Aside from giving Knife Talk a five star review on our preferred podcast source and letting your sponsors know you sent us by using the Knife Talk coupon code." Is there anything at all that we listeners do to help, can do to help or to give back? Uh, no, just send in your content, send in questions, any dilemmas you have, all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, we appreciate you all listening. And sharing your stories. When people write stories on Instagram about us, we always repost them, unless it's a giveaway. Yeah. Some people are doing these giveaways and they're putting us on there. And it's just like, I can't really, it's just is not right for me to be advertising a giveaway for something we don't really know anything about. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit strange. Support, that, but, um, yeah, just supporting the sponsors, right? Yeah, supporting. Yeah, I mean that's, that's the best one. Support the sponsors and give us reviews and yeah, and just yeah, it's all good. Here's all good. here's and one of the best. Tell people to follow us too, because like Mareko pointed out earlier, if we can get more followers on Instagram, we can then you know put the links in things and just make it easier for everybody. The sponsors have been amazing, and they're great, and they're loyal, and they're fired up because we're moving everything. We tried not to just get stuff that's expensive. Like, you know, obviously, I mean, grinders aren't cheap and ovens aren't cheap, but like we tried to give discounts on stuff that's relatively reasonably priced. So like the stuff from Texas Ferry Supply, Combat Abrasives, you know, those are all really, you know, we try to give you value based on your budget too. So, you know, showing some love to them is, is helps us out a lot. Yeah, yeah, and we've we've worked hard to make sort of discounts on on everything you need for whether it's a, whether it's an oven or a grinder or abrasives or whatever it may be, everything you need we we, we can get you a discount. So yeah, we we thank you for listening and um, yeah, that's a big help if you do use the sponsors that we uh, we shout. And you and another thing you can do is send us good questions. Some of them are, you know, me have a question. Questionable. I mean, some of them just don't work. I mean, like, you know, the, the you know, I'm not gonna name names, but you guys ready for another just, question? Sometimes just Let's sometimes they just aren't happening. <laughs> I got I got one from our guy Ben Snur. Have you heard of him? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I talked to him. Cowboy I talked Jimmy. to him yesterday. <laughs> Uh, he says, hey, man, can I ask you a question? When eating warm cheese like brie, is it proper to eat the wax rind or only the inside? Thanks, fellas. Your number one fan, Ben Snur. And for the record, he eats the rind. Oh, animal. You sickening animal. Really? You don't eat? No. Wow. That you was don't eat the skin? A, that was wax. quite a thing don't to say. Animal. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's our number one fan. You're an animal. <laughs> he's an animal. You're, you're, you're out of touch. No, you can't be eating the wrong skin. Why not? Jesus. No. Wow. It's not. It's not. No. It's not. You're an out of touch motherfucker. You. Wow. You got yourself out unbelievable. Touch. Out of touch. And also, these people who, um, let's say it's a round of cheese. Yeah. Um, these people who who will slice across, and um, the <laughs> the whole thing is you got to share the you got to share the nose of the cheese. Do you know about the nose of the no, cheese? No. What's the nose of the cheese? So th- let's say the cheese comes in a round, right. and it's let's say you've got a cheese board for whatever reason. Um, everybody needs to have – so you need to slice it like a cake, basically. Right. So everybody has that little bit in the middle equally. Okay. Because that's the nose of the cheese. So imagine a, a, a wedge. That's the nose, and that's the, the, like the best bit the of the The pinnacle cheese. of the triangle is the nose. That's the nose, exactly. So never cut – the nose if you're slicing up cheese everybody should have a piece of the nose because that's the best bit of the cheese you're out of touch dude wow. cheese etiquette come really? on. i mean come on it, so you still wouldn't eat the skin though of the brie even if you had hell a, no really you've never hell eaten no the, hell no jeez i feel no. like i've never not eaten the skin of the brie <laughs> i would oh, i'm wow. in i'm in the i'm in Mareka and ben snur's camp I mean, I'm not going to just, like, rip the top off and just, like, eat it like a bagel. But, I mean. <laughs> animals. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> animals? <laughs> there you go, Ben. Well, I, you know, I often get the staff to remove the skin from me first. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> After it's pro- you, baked to a that... proper 135 degrees. But what happens if you're eating a baked brie that's, like, baked in, in bread? Yeah, the skin changes then. Oh, baked and bread. I've I've only done baked brie just the round. This is this is I've never this done is becoming, any Yeah. This is becoming I wouldn't lame. bake a brie. This See, is be- I'd bake a camembert. I wouldn't bake a brie. You've never had baked brie? <laughs> We're all out of touch right now. Our listeners Holy are just smokes. like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? I'm eating beef jerky. <laughs> I had Slim Jims and Mountain Dew. What the fuck are these guys talking about? <laughs> A brie is not for baking. A camembert is for baking. Oh, wow. I, then I am so Similar. grotesque off by this guy. This is terrible. This is a terrible bit right here. Well, part it's of terrible. the reason I want to bring Ben Snur up is I just want to give him a shout out. He's going to be one of the presenters at the Travis Schwartz Hammerin coming up in March. Uh, they have very limited numbers of, for tip- tickets. Everything. It's a whole outdoor event, but they're keeping the numbers low for this event. And so, I, you know, I don't know how many tickets are still available. We go check it out on tra- Travis Schwartz. Uh, website and go v- hang out with Ben Snur, the the cowboy a, with all the skill. Great dude, great dude. I, He's I'm a good guy. I am very lucky. I talk to him as often as I do. I very I'm, I'm much. I enjoy enjoy Ben Snur's conversations very much. He's awesome. Yeah, great dude. Terrible way of eating cheese. <laughs> oh my We're God. so out of touch. Seriously. <laughs> Brendan Murrin says, "I want to get a new press, uh, but I also want to." apocalypse what's a guy to do <laughs> what's a guy to do uh, get the press presses what about presses i mean is there like a brand of press that people should be buying i mean we're not sponsored by any but i mean we often talk about you know hammers and all the rest of it we very rarely talk about presses right um and i'd imagine if you're making damascus i'd imagine a press would be pretty handy for a lot of people um, because they're less noisy and all the rest of it. But um, I wouldn't have a clue what what you know what to do. Maybe we should talk about that next week a bit more. Um, presses, you know, presses for beginners, that kind of thing. Press talk. I mean, just to hit it lightly. I mean, I've basically only ever worked under a press. I worked under hammers a little bit while I was at Dragon's Breath, but otherwise, I've been working under a press for you know six out of uh, six of the eight years that I've been making Damascus and making knives. Mm. Um, I will say one that's that's really readily available are the coal iron presses, um, coal iron works, and uh, you know I've worked under one 
uh, at both Neil Common Morris Shop and Zach Brown Shop, and they're great machines. They you know they get it done, and yeah, I I'm, I was very happy with the work that we got done under them. So I like those ones, but you know, yeah, there are a lot of great um, presses out there. What would be the advantage? Of a press, obviously they're they're quieted. Do you have more control, I assume, as well? Well, yeah, it's a little bit slower of a process, so you do have a little bit more control versus you know you see people mm. with these big hammers and um you know it's easy to get out of control with those. And honestly, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, or you're not well, you don't have good control over the machine. You can do the same thing with a press. Um, but I like a press because I feel like I do have a lot more control and it's also versatile tool. Like you can drift holes for hammerheads and under a press you can do all kinds of stuff you could set guards under a press like say you're working with a non-ferrous material like a brass or bronze or copper or whatever even a nickel silver you could get that guard pretty reasonably close uh filed to shape and then you could just just with the gentlest little squish squish that press and you have that or uh, you know Ideally, you have that kind of control. I know I have that kind of control under my press to move it extremely slowly. Um, and so you can do all kinds of funky stuff under presses. You can squish cans under press. Press. You can make apple cider under a press. <laughs> Squishing cans is pretty fun, though. Actually, I've seen, um, I've seen people use a press to, set their, to hang their axe heads. Sure. I've, they'll you know figure something out oh. so they can kind of really press the axe head onto the handle. I've seen that been done yeah. before? Mm, sure. Nice. It's the difference between using chopsticks or a fork. They're different, but you're gonna get your food in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Right. Do we have any um, questions that you really need to get through? Um... We got we got so many here, and it, it, unfortunately, it's a case of just picking picking them out now because we wouldn't have time to read them all. I mean, we got... uh, this one comes from Black Cat Blades. Dear Knife yeah. Talk, I should have known better, but I was listening to last week's episode, and the litter box talk portion of the show came on while I was trying to freehand an S grind. Thank you for many laughs, and now I have to make a new knife. Now I have a new knife for my personal collection. <laughs> I told the story of uh, who is it? George Clooney um, played a joke on his buddy by pretending that his <laughs> shit <didn't laughs> he shat in the litter box. Yeah. You gotta look. You gotta go back to that one. But that was a good one. I do like it. Yeah. I do. I do. From a very you know juvenile, a juvenile way, I do like it when if we tell a joke while somebody's doing something very sensitive and they fuck something up. <laughs> Part of me gets a little bit of satisfaction when I hear about that. However, at the deeply, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. Yeah. Yeah. It amazes me that, I mean, looking at the stats of our listeners, at any one point, any any time of the week, there's going to be around at least eight people listening to the show. Obviously, that's a lot higher on a Monday because we have a new episode. But like even like on a three in the morning on a Wednesday, there's at least eight people listening to the show, which is crazy. Huh. Crazy. Well, nice. congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for listening. Um, I'll do one more, and then if Morocco has one, um, and then we'll we'll call it a day. Um, Brad Richardson says, first of all, thanks for the awesome content. According to Spotify, you're one of my top podcasts of 2020, and I only started listening last month. But I've got a question about dust collection. Uh, similar to Coco Bolo and penises, <laughs> sparks and dust always don't mix well. Whoops. How do you manage dust in the knife shop while while preventing a vacuum fire? And that's Brad Richardson from Timberley Forge. Um, we've talked about this in in, in detail, actually, of the last few episodes, um, simply because I'm, I'm moving to a new shop very, very soon, um, and I want to keep it the dust down because where I am at the moment is terrible. Um, yeah, I, I'm interested in the, I mentioned last week again, the, uh, the you know, those ceiling things, those air scrubbers. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw a video this week, actually, from Jeremy from Simple Little Life, um, and it, they seem to be more effective for wood as opposed to metal dust, which seems to sort of fall to the floor, whereas wood will stay in the air a lot, a lot longer. Um, but yeah, I think the main the main thing is not not mixing the two. So if you you know if you've got some sort of dust collection system, uh, using for wood when you're doing your scales, that kind of thing, don't use that same one then for you know sparks because uh, it's obviously highly combustible and any any uh, wood chippings or any any wood dust 
if you get a hot spark in there. Sure. Yeah, I just, I keep all my, I have a grinding room, basically. It's a, like a 10 by 10 room. Ooh. And <laughs> you know, I'd put up a wall real quick and easy, I feel like. Uh, but anyways, it's got air circulating through it, and I just keep my whole mess in there. I don't have a, a, a dust collection system. I just try to do a good job of staying on top of blowing the dust down um, and vacuuming when needed. Yeah. yeah. And water, grinding, you know, if, when you're grinding steel, grind your bevels and stuff, just have a bucket underneath yeah. and catch loads of shit. For sure. Definitely. There we go. All right. I mean, what's sad? <laughs> no. Yeah, it, it's as simple as that, really. It, 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 yeah, I wish there was like a magic magic button we could press that would just clean everything up for us, but unfortunately... I have a right. tip. I have a tip for your Broadback Ironworks. The B in the Broadback Ironworks stand fits a... Uh, if you get like a pony clamp, like a... Uh, you know what I'm talking about, a pony clamp? It's no. like a C clamp, but it like... The bottom part slides up and down, and then you have like a twister. You have like the, you know what I'm talking about? It's like a, like a clamp, like a, not a C clamp, oh, but okay. like yeah, the bottom yeah. part slides up and down. You put a trigger and it slides up and down. If you get oh, yeah, those yeah. pony clamps, they fit through the two Bs in the Broadbeck Ironworks uh, a cutout in the stand, the bottom of the stand. So I actually made a little uh, piece of wood with a circle in it that fits uh, the end of the hose of my um, uh, wet dry vac. And then I'm able to put it underneath when I'm doing the wood. So I actually slide the pony. So the, po pony, oh, got, yeah. the pony clamp is holding the circle. The, and then in the circle is the, uh, is the end of my uh, hose, and then I stick it through the B of the Broadback Ironworks, and it fits perfectly underneath when I'm using wood. And then when I'm not using wood, I just take it out. Uh -huh. Broadback Ironworks, you did it again. Well, they're about to do it again for this next question. This is from Sean Porter. He says, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very much a beginner knife maker and bla uh, blacksmith, and I've been working on my first forged integral bolster knife out of three-quarter inch coil spring. I'm pretty happy with the shape and form, but I've been wondering how you grind the integral bolster, hidden tang, and the hidden tang sections. Uh, most... Uh, sorry, mostly in what order do you shape it? Um, so, oh, do you shape the tang and then the bolster and then the ricasso or something different? Uh, so, first off, when it comes to cleaning up the transition from the blade to the bolster, the broadback integral grinding attachment is pretty damn handy for that. Um, and that'll get in there and clean that up really nicely. And I, what's great about their integral grinding, so basically it's from where the wheel or the belt comes down from the, the idle wheel at the top down to the small contact wheel. Um, on the arm, they have a kind of a ramp or a, a platen, but you don't really do a lot of grinding on that platen. It's more kind of like for some indexing support. So w when I had an integral grinding platen that I built myself years ago, I, I would gently rest the blade on there and then basically just kind of cram the bolster up into the small contact wheel against the belt and that would clean it up uh, in there. You can do that uh, before you heat treat, you can do that after you heat treat. Also when it comes to cleaning up the bottom of the bolster, you also can do that before you heat treat or after you heat treat. I don't worry about it until after I heat treat because, um, because I'm using some carbide file guides um, to hold onto the bolster area. Um, while I'm cleaning up the bottom of the bolster, so the transition from the bolster to the tank, to my hidden tank. Um, and those carbides, are they're not going to get ground away. Um, so I, whether it's hard or soft or, you know, preheat treat, you know, I'm happy to grind away at it and make those sparks fly. So, um, yeah, and I think... And then, and so the Ricasso, you know, I don't know what to say about the Ricasso. The Ricasso, for my knives, there's, there isn't really much of a Ricasso. It's just a blade, a bolster, and then a tang. And there's no kind of plunge line or on my integrals. Um, I kind of just make, when I'm, when I'm cleaning up that front of the bolster transition to the blade, that kind of just becomes my quote unquote plunge, that whole, that whole length there. And so there isn't a, a, a secondary plunge in front of that or anything. I don't know if I even answered that question, but I hope it helps. 
I think he did. (laughs) I I really think, though, that that especially if you're new to integrals, those integral grinding platens are key. And what is awesome about the one that Broadback's doing is that not only is it really well built, but what I really love about it is that the bearings that hold that hold the wheel or the the uh, for the small contact wheel, the, usually the bearings on the outer edge get in the way, especially from a knife like mine where my bolster is angled. Um, those those outer bearings would get in the way and either hit the heel of the knife or the spine of the knife um, because it's just it's the blade is splayed out over a longer area versus a straight integral where you would just have the blade you know perfectly in line with the belt and cleaning up the front of the bolster and so what's nice about the broadback one is it creates a lot of versatility and freedom to be able to do that and you can also not only use it for cleaning up integrals but also if you want to try to fuller your knife you can use it to fuller your blade um like some of the fullers you see uh you know like jason knight and other folks doing on their knives get those get the fuller action going so there you go Sean there we go (laughs) private consultancy by Mareko Marmasi don't worry Don (laughs) I think that's a show you know I think that's a show Um, what we got going on this week Um, what's the big dream Uh, Jeff I'm hoping that it doesn't snow tomorrow. It's supposed to snow tomorrow, and I'm hoping it's not. So that's the dream. And um, my kid has been cooking a lot, and it's been so much fun cooking alongside of her. She's nice. she's gotten very, very good at time management. So I'm enjoying her. She's going to be cooking this week, so I'm looking forward to that. Killer. Cool. cool. Morocco, what's happening for you this mm. week? Well, I actually want to start by just thanking everybody who has helped support the calendars. They've been a great hit. Um, we still have a few calendars available, um, and it's only February. This month's uh, spread is Aaron Wilburn's beautiful dagger with a sheath made by his daughter, Francesca. Um, we got a lot of great makers in the calendar this year, and if you're interested in one, you can go to my Instagram. i got a link in the bio there, uh, or you can just go straight to my website in the store, too. It's available there as well. But I just want to thank everybody who has helped support that, um, and especially people who've been tagging. If you tag me, and like you get your calendar, you put it up. I want to see where people are actually hanging them. So take a picture, tag me in it. I want to post it back up and share it out. Um, so again, thank you everybody. Uh, when it comes to this weekend of work though, I want to just be able to get back in the shop safely and, uh, because, and sooner than later, but unfortunately I think it, it's still going to be a, at least another day, maybe two before I can get back in the shop. Um, so fingers crossed there cause I got to get shit well, done. I gotta... It's perfect for your, you're coming on my podcast. We'll be talking oh, yeah. tomorrow. That's right. So it's perfect that there's, you're going to be snowed in and relaxed. Snowed in. I'll just be back at... No I'll, talking about me, you guys. My icebox. We're going to talk about what kind of animal you are. You've, what <laughs> what kind animal? Of animal you are. I, uh, I've, yeah, honestly, I was thinking about the uh, our, our chat coming up, and I feel like I've been a bit guarded, and I know how you like to just fucking do your psychology shit i'm I'm, so, I'm done with that i'm done with the psychology so I, we're gonna I'm done i think with the we're, we're gonna get into some stuff that i, I haven't talked about ever before oh, either with craig but, or even on joe rogan's podcast you, we got some fresh well it's all shit. your whatever you want to talk here's the funny thing is and i got yeah, my, i got my, i got my i got my i got my testicles Great. Beaten. I love it when you talk about it. I love it when you talk about beating your testicles. I almost said tickled, but I didn't get tickled. I, I people have been, you know, people think that I'm like, you know, I have some sort of like, you know, I'm trying to psychologically evaluate people. I'm not doing that anymore because it's just like it's enough already. But I am interested in what people have, how they've gotten where they've gotten. Sure. Then I'm trying to find out what people do. So whatever you want, I'm looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. That's for sure. It's a busy week coming up for me. So um, first off, I'm getting the, uh, the the folding knives that I've been working on for, it feels like months and months now. Um, 
I'll be getting them coming back from the laser cutter so I can like do some grinding, some heat treating, and put one or two together, keep them in my pocket for a bit, that kind of thing, as I normally do. So that that's really exciting. Um, but we are finally um, getting our new house tomorrow. Wow. So it's a big day for us tomorrow. Congratulations. Um, yeah, and it seems it's been a long time coming. So, um, yeah, so that's going to keep me busy for the next next few years, if anything. Um yeah, really exciting. The weather's looking good, so we can get over to the house. We can get some work done, and, and basically that's what's going to be happening. We're going to be working on the house for um, for a number of months before we, we before we move in. Um, but I <laughs> I got a bit excited yesterday, and I bought the uh, the kids, the, our little daughters, um, something to keep them entertained because we're going to be we're going to be over the house, um, and you know they're going to be bored shitless. Whilst you know we're <laughs> sanding things down and painting and all the rest of it um so so I went online i was looking at like kids um you know like parks you know swing sets slides and all these kinds of oh, things wow. and i didn't realize there's a whole world of these things and they're like some of them are just massive and there's like, multiple slides and climbing nets and climbing ropes so i was like okay I'll, I'll 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 get a small one so then you're looking at the cost then like you know for 50 quid more you can have that extra then for 50 good more, you can have that extra. I got a little bit carried away. So I've got this truck coming this week with this whole bloody park in there that I need to assemble. Oh, wow. So that's going to be the first job. So I'm hoping <laughs> by next weekend we'll, the kids will have somewhere that they can play um, so we can, yeah, get to work a little bit. So, yeah, it's going to be a really busy week. Um, it's going to be exciting. Um, as I'm excited about these knives as much as the new house. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. So I would like this week to go smoothly and for it to remain dry, basically. Oh, yeah. That's a show. That's a show. Um, we shall speak to you all again next week. Bye for now. This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. <sighs> Man, we had so many questions then. We didn't even oh get to Oh, my God. Yeah, for sure. Loads. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's How big is this thing that you got? This this park thing. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. How heavy do you think it is? How, how many levels is it? There's three levels. Oh my levels, god! Four by four Tell meters. me your kids it's, are. There's flags on top. Oh my god! Four meters. It, it's it's like a whole castle thing. It's. Yeah, Did you say four I'm meters tall? To putting it up. No, four meters by four meters, as okay. in length and width. All oh, right. Um, it's probably about four meters tall. Oh my too. god! There's there's three levels to it. It's huge. Yeah, I got I got properly stung there. <laughs> uh, yeah, just you know that thing where you know it's, it's just a little extra and you can get this. Just a little extra you can get <laughs> That's that. That's you look you. at your final car. Like, oh, I mean, you're fuck. already spending this much. What's another fifty? Come on. Uh exactly. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it'll last them for you know for years and years to come. So yeah, that's maybe. what you think. Yeah. yeah. See, so you feeling better now, you Jeff? Yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling much better. Good, good. Just, I, good. I don't. I'm not. You know, I I I do like being sick a little bit because it's like a forced vacation. <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. like it's, I I have to be like. I'm it's forced time you would not take anything. for yourself, except for you feel like shit the whole time instead of actually feeling all right. It wasn't uh, great. It wasn't no. excellent. Yikes! It wasn't excellent at all. Well, at least you're feeling better. I feel now. better. I feel better now that we're going to be switching hosts for this for the makery. Oh, I'm so pleased. Yeah. So we actually already have. So last week's episode is already well. All the episodes are now streaming on the new right. one. Um, but it was from last week. So you know the listeners they won't know, but um, basically the host that hosts all the audio has now changed because we were using a, a platform called Megaphone, which was just. Oh, I thought we weren't going to. They sold me. They sold me the dream. They were like, "This will be completely easy to manage, especially for the network for all the other shows," and you know, we get paid for the ads that they put in. They they sold me the dream, and um, it's cost me a fortune, and we haven't earned a penny from it. So, this this new host is 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 really good. Jeez. So yeah, I'm, it's a lot less work for me, and and we'll get paid. For Here's what's too, annoying, which is, which is and I've been waiting for this because it annoys the shit out of me because you do so much for all these goddamn podcasts we've been doing. And we've been putting them up since June. I mean, I've been I've been doing them a full blast since May, and then we've been putting mm. up. And we started to get the 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 ads, the intrusive ads, 
since June, <laughs> and people send me messages. Oh, you were talking, and all of a sudden, McDonald's is selling me a fucking McGriddle. You know, it's like, and we haven't even gotten fucking paid. You know, and it's just exactly. like, yeah. it annoys the shit out of me that not number one, you did all this work and you haven't been paid. And number two, our listeners are irritated and we haven't gotten paid. If they're going to be irritated, we all should have been paid. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, no, you're right. You're Fucking right. annoying. Um, but one one thing we will find with the new pod, the new hosts now, so these dynamic ads that are inserted, um, one of them goes right at the beginning of the show. So, do you know, like when you listen to like, well, when you used to listen to Joe Rogan, you could just get rid of all those ads straight off the front. You can right. just forward through them to the show. They can do that at least, mm. you know? Um, and we still get paid for that. So What's well, annoying. Um, and it's because, and it sucks because then all of a sudden, well, I mean, I don't mean to bitch, but I mean, that's what you do in radio. It's you, you bitching is fun. It's annoying because it's like, you know, guys like uh, Brian, you know, they're, they're having the Brian's, Brian House, the house made podcast or uh, work for mm. it. He's got to get on sponsors and he's got to, you know, he's shooting in for a Patreon and people are, you know, it's like, we're trying to make it make it work here. I mean, I you know I I pulled on a, a an ad for uh, Axe Wax. They've been awesome. But I like, how many ads are you going to put on this goddamn thing? And then That's the fact the that we're not even yeah. getting paid for it, it's fucking annoying. Because yeah. people people Definitely. seem to think that I'm getting checks from Starbucks and and Prudential <laughs> directly from and from fucking from McDonald's. Yeah. And it was like we haven't seen a nickel. <laughs> fucking not a fucking red penny nickel. <clears throat> but we've made a lot of money. Fucking for that a right, we for, did for megaphone. Because they take half of the money anyway, but they just haven't paid us. But it makes us look yet. bad, and that's why I don't yeah, like. I, I, it makes and, it, and you haven't been paid. And it, it's just like, yeah. And also, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of fucking so, work. Like, like you, you know that you haven't been able to log in and oh. all the rest of it. So you know, emailing me bits and pieces and all the other hosts, there, and it was just, it was just all gone. These flea much, bags. So, yeah. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden they switched everything, and then I had to change my password and then they refuse they lock me out and now i have to manually send all my information to craig and he got to put it in manually it's annoying they sold for like 180 million or jesus. something like that to spotify jesus and oh. it sounds to me as if it's one guy in a bedroom doing the whole thing it's oh yeah ridiculous. he's already spending his spotify money he doesn't give a fuck about you guys anymore <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! But but I I forgot to mention actually that it's nothing to do with nice. That's why I didn't mention it on the show. But um, I've I've this personal project that I've been working on for a little while. Um, next week the first one goes live. So it's another podcast, but it's it's not sort of maker related. It's music related. Um, but that's going to be only on Spotify. Hmm. Um, and the reason being is um, it's 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 a weird one. So the whole the whole podcast is about music. So I take a classic album. Um, and I speak to people who are involved in that album. Oh wow! Um, and it's called Sleeve Notes. So, um, so like whether they're engineers that worked on it, uh, you know, music engineers, or they were mixing engineers, or whether they made the sleeve to the album, like designers. Um, and we talk to them, and in between that, we'll play tracks from that album because you can do that with Spotify now. Oh, you killing. can play um, music um, in a in a Spotify podcast. So it's going to be cool. So it's going to be like an extra way of listening to an album by hearing the people sort of behind the album I in for, between tracks I forgot. Talking about. I used to read those the sleeve notes, and there are so many people involved in making an album. It's yeah. insanity. Yeah. And I, I used to, as a kid, I used to love it, like getting the record, and you'd read the sleeve yeah. notes, and you'd see, you know, who was playing harmonica on track eight and all the rest. Right. You know. But now, obviously, you know, we don't get that because we get a little one inch by one inch picture of the record sleeve and we don't hear any more so yeah so this is going to be really cool so I've, I've been recording this first one for a few weeks because there's a bunch of people involved that i talk to and like different interviews with all within one show um and the first one goes live next week so yeah it's exciting. that's exciting that's so you're cool. gonna have three podcasts <sighs> yeah. and building a house but th this 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 new one <laughs> This Why? this new one won't be like a weekly podcast because it take, it literally takes a few weeks for each episode. So um, maybe it's a monthly but thing. It, it, maybe yeah, I'm not I'm not putting a time sure. on it. So the the idea is when you go to Spotify and you ask for an album, um, you you obviously you could hear the album, uh, but you'll also have this option of hearing sleeve notes version oh, of the man. album, which would be the album with all this talking in between. That's such a cool idea because it's like uh, it's like the director commentary on films, but it's for albums. Yeah, and it's it's similar to I don't know if you you hear Song Exploder, um, so that's on um, not just sounds on, like it's a podcast problem on Jeff was albums. having the other day <laughs> wasn't sound. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and I mean, Song Exploded is now on Netflix as well, where they take literally one song and they talk to everybody involved in that song, whether the songwriters and the producers and all those. So it's similar okay. to that, but it'll be the whole album. So we'll take it track by track. So yeah, so it's cool. pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so I've got that going on this week as well. So it, yeah, it's just busy at the moment and it's, it, it's yeah. good. Feels good. The sun's starting to shine. It feels as if spring's happening. It feels, I don't know, it feels as if we're coming out of the dark a little bit. I might have a really, really good. I might have a crazy guest. I don't want to talk about uh-huh. it until it happens, but uh, I might have a. I might have a, fa- a celebrity. I might have a celebrity guest coming up on on full blast. Uh-huh. But if I talk celebrity about it too much, in. household name celebrity. <sighs> did, pretty. Did I mean, United Nico, States. Did Nico set you up? No, no, oh. no. Nico didn't set me up. However, Nico just gave me a really nice bottle of whiskey. So. Nico, uh, we're oh, gonna get Nico back on at some point, but uh, no, this is a nice. uh, this is something different. I, I, if it doesn't, if I don't, I want to talk about it, but if it doesn't happen, I don't want to talk about it. So, I got you. We'll see. It'll be it'll yeah. be fun. We'll see. Music, uh, actor, yep, uh, maker. Where, where, where a they music, from? What, a musician, what? and actor. Ah. So. We'll see if it happens. Lady, Lady Gaga, Bruce Springsteen, isn't it? No, not Lady Gaga. Right, we're going to announce now. Bruce Springsteen is on the the full blast Dude, show next. Bruce week. Springsteen. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen just got a DUI in fucking New Jersey of all places, and he apparently really? only he was under the level, under the limit. He was under the limit of, of what you're supposed to get a DUI for. for. Hmm. And they 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 picked him up. I guess he, I guess he like he was driving his motorcycle oh, yeah, in this yeah, public park, bikes, yeah. and then these guys gave him a shot. He took a shot. Uh, a shot, you know, whatever, and the cops pulled him over, pulled him right over, and DUI. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Fucking New Jersey, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Have Have you guys ever fuck. been shot dialed? What's that? <laughs> my sister just did it. I'd seen other people doing it. My sister just did it to me yesterday. Uh, but she called last night randomly, and she's like, hey, just want to say hi and shot dial you. And basically, it's just jumping in to say hi real quick to do a shot with somebody over like a video call and then that's it <laughs> but they're in like they're, she's so she's down in new orleans and they're in the middle of mardi gras right now and uh, uh. And so she we all did it with our my son was drinking his water and we all cheered each other and i don't know it's just kind of a fun thing to do real quick that is fun yeah Shot that's down. funny but new orleans i mean uh. um, it's like a daily it's, a prof- it's just a regular part of their life <laughs> air prof- that's a professional drinking <laughs> state I uh, mean, city. That's a professional <laughs> drinking city. Yeah. They have it's the it's the only place where they have like in the mornings, they have like a a, uh, a cleaning truck that drives up a street and and it sprays perfume. It's <laughs> a <laughs> true story. It smells so bad there. It's not. There is a there is one specific street in Cardiff, my hometown, where that happens to. The one with all the uh, food trucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Well, not food trucks, but like um, shops, shops yeah. takeaway shops, all in one. Yeah, right in the middle of all the bars and clubs and stuff. There's this one street, and it's just stinking. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got all to right. go. I've got kids to see and food to eat. Sounds good. It's, it's, it's Valentine's Day. I should. Oh yeah. Spend your time. Oh with yeah. My do you guys have plans? <laughs> I did all the Valentine's. Uh, no, stuff last we. Night. We agreed we weren't we weren't going to do anything apart from for the kids. So we bought the kids, sure. you know, a little teddy and you know, cards and stuff. But my wife and I, we said we got a busy week coming up, so let's both agree not to do anything. Sure, sure. And I made that mistake yesterday. It was like, oh, I need to pop out to get something, and what? It, and it was nothing to do with Valentine's Day. But whilst I was out, I was thinking she's going to think I'm getting her something for Valentine's Day now, and she and, and, and I didn't, and I it all worked out well in the end. <laughs> yeah, I never trust her when she when she says, you know. I don't want anything. Let's not let's not do anything for Valentine's Day this year. I, I never trust it. Never it's trust definitely it a roll of the dice. Yeah. It is, isn't it? I'll yeah. give you one yeah. cool uh, thing we did last night that my wife and I used to do all the time when I was younger. Oh, I don't need relax, to. Relax, dude. Relax. I'm telling you a fucking again. tip, you motherfucker. You, you breed. <laughs> mo- God damn you. We cooked. My, my kid has been really into cooking. So we decided to uh, watch the movie Big Night and cook at the same time. That's a fucking mm. good move. We made it. We made pizza, and uh, we mm. watched Big Night, and then we watched Casino. My kids into gangster movies. Ah, uh, so good. but if you watch a good like Italian cooking food and cook Italian food while you're watching it, that's a mm. fucking move. We might do that again. Big you know, Night. I've never heard. What's, what is I haven't that? Heard a Big of Night. Either. 
Oh, dude, yeah. Big Night is from 1996. I know. You, we were we were being swaddled in 1996. I was two. And it's Stanley Tucci. <laughs> you weren't two. I was you fucking two. two years old. I was. In 1996? 100%. Oh, 90s. I thought you said 86. No. I no. thought you said 86. 96. 96. 1996. Okay. 90s. Jeez. Cool. 96, I was still 14. in middle school. All right, so... A big night is Stanley Tucci and Tony Shalhoub, and it's this uh, these brothers. They're made up names to start with. <laughs> Tony Chichi and Tony, Tony Shalhoub. Tony Chichi. I said Tony Shalhoub. <laughs> Tony okay. Shalhoub and Stanley Tucci. <laughs> you said, I don't know what the fuck you You've said. never these heard are, those these names. Are proper, these are proper actors. No. Wow. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> you don't like it? Some made up. They're to fucking me. brothers, and they they run this tiny restaurant, and then the. Be- Choo Choo and Chaloo. Fucking... They sound like a really bad cop it's... drama. Choo Choo and Chaloo. Listen to me. Why don't you learn something, you fucking you fucking animal? You get watch a big night. And it's Different got culture, this incredible um, Isabella Rossellini's on there and she's oh exquisite. And and it's great. It's a great movie. It makes you real hungry for Italian food. You know what really yeah, turned want, me on to maybe watch that tonight. cooking? Oh. What's that? What were you saying, Craig? Oh no no go on I was just saying maybe I'll watch it. It's that great on yeah, Amazon. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, I've never seen it. Okay. It was uh, the the fir- the Godfather when Michael yeah. Corleone goes through the market, he gets all the food, gets home, he's cooking the meal, and the the woman the girl is loving it the whole time. It's like oh that's how you fucking get a chick. You learn how to cook some fucking <laughs> food, and honestly like that has been out of all the stupid shit I thought I was doing to be cool like play guitar or do sports it was always like just being able to like nurture somebody and make them some fucking delicious food that's how Telling it always you won the heart food. all the time all the time all about the food right I yeah. need to go and eat right. I'm starving me too <laughs> right I should speak to you all again um, have a good um, podcast you two right, looking forward Thank to you. speak about me too much right. cheers cheers This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers.